In today's video, we're going to talk about three ways that you can tackle your angled fireplace. Hey friends, thank you so much for stopping to watch this video. If you are new here, my name is Sandy. And if you're coming back, then thank you for having joined the family. At the end of this video, if you like it, then please make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna connect with me more, then don't forget to follow me on Instagram. So let's get into the video. So I wanted to make this video because I think when someone has an angled fireplace, oftentimes um, it's competing with like a TV or some other centerpiece in the room and they try and make it all one big open space and that can generally be a mistake. Uh, so we're gonna go over three ways that you can kind of create separate moments in your living room to make it feel more intentional and not make the fireplace feel like an afterthought or make the TV feel like an afterthought. The first thing you can do is to put two chairs in front of the fireplace. So this seems kind of like simple, <laughs> probably, uh, but it does really create this intentional moment because if you're if your, for instance, your um, your fireplace is angled right over here, and then your TV is over here, and your sofa is facing the TV, because you want generally people want their most comfortable seating facing their TV, but it doesn't always have to be like that. Um, but generally, that's the rule of thumb, and it can feel if you don't have anything there, it can feel like oh, well, here's a TV, here's a sofa and you just kind of like forgot about the fireplace or it's behind or whatever. But if you don't have space for a reading nook, a fireplace can also be a great place to incorporate this reading nook. And having two chairs, um, usually kind of like angled, facing that fireplace, can then just, again, like I said, make it feel more intentional. It gives um, extra seating so that you're, um, so that anyone who's not watching TV, because not everyone who's in the living room is watching TV, um, has a place to sit or do, just like uh, or do whatever they need to do. I don't know, knit, pet your cat, drink whiskey. I don't know what people do in front of fireplaces. I'm from Florida. They're not something that we use a lot, whatever. Anywho, it's just a nice place to have some extra seating and it looks very intentional, like you planned it, which is what you want, because you don't want it to seem like, oh, I just kind of forgot about this area of my living room. Next thing you can do is add benches or poofs. Um, so this is very similar to the seating, but here's why it's a little different. When you add chairs, it kind of, the chairs, they have backs generally, and it blocks off the area and it makes it feel very separate. Because I'm here, I'm facing there, I can't, I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm facing the fireplace and I can't like see behind me or anything. And the chair backs create their own kind of little wall. But when you have something like a bench that's low and has no, no height to it or poofs, it allows it to become part of the other seating space. So if you're, if there's like a TV space or anything like that, it, um, it lets it be more, more flow. Yes, it allows for more flow between those two separate spaces, whereas putting the chairs there makes us feel, okay, very separate space to go do something separate. Um, especially if you are, if you're in a situation where your fireplace is actually, your TV is above the fireplace, which is um, usually ideal because that way you're not having something compete with each other, but there, your sofa could be facing the fireplace and the TV's there, great. Sometimes it's nice to have a bench um, opposite the coffee table because it allows just for some extra seating so that someone can um, either face the fireplace if they want to or just flip their legs around and these are legs. These are my hands. This is how I flip my legs around. I don't know. Well, how do you guys flip your legs around? <laughs> All right, now that's over. Uh, it allows you to just kind of have this versatile seating space and chairs, um, not chairs, but the bench is kind of more easily movable for if you're having like a game night or a gathering. It allows it to just it be both conversational and TV viewing. If someone wants to, you know, look up at the TV or just turn around and talk to whoever is sitting on the sofa. Last thing you can do to tackle your angled fireplace is angle your furniture. Uh, just because your room is square and then there's like this one little angled part doesn't mean that your furniture all has to be parallel to the walls. That's not the case. It might make more sense for your space to have the room be um, angled, all the furniture angled. Uh, you're in charge of the flow of how people are walking and just because the walls are a certain way doesn't mean that that's the flow that people have to walk in. The way you set the furniture helps dictate where the traffic is going to move in your home. So if something's angled, just turn your sofa to it. And um, then you'll essentially be making probably a square 
inside a square that's like turned a little bit. I'm gonna try and find a picture <laughs> of something like that so that it makes a little sense to you guys. Uh, so I might put it up here. So like I said, just take that sofa, turn it, face it towards the angled fireplace. This, however, works if your TV is mounted over your fireplace. If you are in a situation where the, the fireplace and the TV are separate, then doing chairs, benches, and poofs might be more optimal for you because it, it could feel a bit disjointed if you're just facing it towards that and then there's not ex additional seating that's like facing the TV. That might be a little weird or it might have to cause everyone to like turn their heads in an uncomfortable way um, and you don't necessarily want that. You want everyone to be comfortable in your home. So, and those are three ways you can tackle your angled fireplace. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up um, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and connect with me on Instagram. And if you made it this far, then obviously you liked it. So I'm gonna tell you to put a ring on it like I always do. All right, you liked it, you watched the video. Just commit to me already. Just commit, just hit that subscribe button. Bye.